Okay, we finished the uh, Perak Yud in Shmuel Aleph. And before we go on to Yud Aleph, I want to go over this concept of which yesterday when we did Pasuk Tezayin, it said that Shol did not tell about the Malucha to his uncle. So I want to spend uh, probably most of this class on this topic. And it's based on a Gemara in Megillah. Gemara Megillah says like this. Bishar Tznir Shahisha Bob Rachel, Sachs of Yatsman Shaw. In the merit of the Tznis that Rachel had, she merited to have a child, a descendant like Shaw, who also was a Tsunua. And we're not going to translate the word snua until we get through the class. And then from now on, we will only use the Hebrew word again. The word does not translate very well into English. It's another Hebrew word that there is no English counterpart to. And what was the tzniyas that Rachel had? So the Gemara goes on and says, Yaakov told Rachel, based on a Rashi, Ki ochi avihu that he is the brother of her father and is he really the brother of her father but really he is the son of the sister of her father but uh, he said to, to Rachel if you are you willing to get married to me she said yes however my father is a is a is a crook you won't be able to overcome him so he said if he is a crook well I'll be a brother to him in, in, in crookedness and and, ta- and she said, is it, is it permitted for a tzaddik to conduct himself in such a way? He says, yes. Yes, if, if someone acts that way to you, you can respond that way. And what's going to be the crookedness? And, and, and after all, what's the problem? How's he going to how's he going to try to trick him? He says, I have an older sister, and he's going to try to make sure that the older sister will get married to you first. So the Gemara says, Moser lost simonim. He gave over to her simonim, signs. And therefore, when it, when it will come uh, the night of the wedding night, I'll ask for the signs, and you'll give me the signs. So what happened? Came the wedding night, and indeed, love unswitched Leah, uh, Rachel with Leah. So so what happened was so Rachel gave her the simon. She got up and handed over. She passed on these signs to Leah. And that's the sneeze that she did not, Rashi says that she should not, that she should not, that she did not uh, publicize the fact that she gave over the simonim. She did not publicize the fact that she gave over the simonim. And that's what it says when it was the next morning and she is Leah. And the question is, so you mean to say until now she wasn't Leah? But the fact that Rachel gave over the Simonim to Leah, he didn't know at the time of his marriage to her that she was Leah. More ends off, therefore she merited to have a descendant from her named Shaul. And how do we know that Shaul was a Tsunua? So we have a proof from that from here as well. When the uncle asked him what happened, so he did not tell over the fact that Shmuel had anointed him. And the Gemara goes on and says, and, and in that merit of Shaul, what did Shaul have? He had a daughter, Esther, he had a descendant, Esther, who when Achashvero said, "No, tell me where do you come from? Where do you come from? What's your lineage? And Mordechai said to Esther, don't you tell where you came from? So she didn't tell where she came from, and therefore, and uh, that that's the lineage. So we have Rachel being a Tsunua, we have Shaul being a Tsunua, and Esther being a Tsunua. So the question is, where do you see the Tsunias over here? What is the Tsunias? We could say a lot of things she did. She had Mesiris Nefesh. She, she showed she loved her sister. She was selfless. But that's not how we commonly understand Sneas. 
Sneus usually means modesty. And that doesn't look like modesty to us. It's nice, it's virtuous. But where's the Sneus? That's question number one. Question number two is we can appreciate that Rachel was in a bind. She was in a tough situation. Uh, after all, she's confronted with the fact that Leah has been given the Simonim and Leah is going to be publicly humiliated and that would not be a good thing. But there were many other options that Rachel could have chosen. And what would have been the simplest option? So, what she could have done is, uh, first of all, she could have told the father, Lavan, and said, I want you to know, it's not a good idea to take Leah instead of me. Yaakov has given me Simonim, and I'm not going to tell the Simonim, and the whole thing's going to be a farce. And Yaakov's going to blow the whistle on you under the chuppah, and you're going to look like a fool. And that would have been the end of the story. That would have been the end of the story. Or, another option, she could have gone to Leah. And Leah certainly was at Sadekes, and she could have told Leah, shouldn't go through with this. I've got the Simonim. I'm not going to give you the Simonim. And uh, it's, it's not going to be good for you. She could have told both of them. She had many other options she could have exercised instead of giving the simonim to Yaakov. So why did she go with that option? That's question number two. Question number three, we know there's the very famous medrash in Eicha, in the beginning of Eicha. It says at the time that Hashem was destroying the Beis Amikdash and was sending His Jewish people into exile, so all the holy patriarchs came before Hashem and asked mercy upon their children Avram and Yitzchak, all the others, they, they mentioned all the great things they did for the Jewish people. And should that not put the people, Jewish people in good stead, that that would be enough of a merit that Hashem would say, you know what, the Jewish people will, will one day come back and the relationship will not be severed forever. And uh, they, they mentioned uh, the Akeda and those merits. And Yaakov mentions how he's willing to give himself over to die to protect his children from Esau. And Moshe mentioned how he was a trusted shepherd and he was most an effort for the Jews. And all of them, Hashem said, it isn't going to be good enough. The decree will not be rescinded. That moment, Rachel gets up and she mentions before the Creator this, this story of giving over the Simonim to Leah. And it says, immediately, Hashem's compassion was aroused. And he says, because of you, Rachel, I will return the Jewish people to their place. So again, the question is, we're not doubting the fact that Rachel was very nice and was very noble. But let's put it this way. Let's stack it up against the previously mentioned activities. A lifetime of Moshe having to deal with the Jewish people and all he had was grief from them. He had nothing but grief. And on top of that, he couldn't go to Eretz Yisrael because he was their leader. If he would have been a commoner, he would have gone into Eretz Yisrael. I would say that stacks up as a pretty good thing. I would say that a father willing to give up his son and a son willing to give up his life, no matter how great Rachel was, I, I would say that matches up pretty well. So what was so great about what Rachel did? We're not minimizing what she did, but why is that so much greater than, than Avram who passed the 10th test? And Hashem said, now I know that you're a Yore Elohim. That's, that's the highest level one can achieve. And this is a merit that, that lasts for such a long time. So where do we see that? Why, what lied in her action that showed that she was so amazing? Question number four. And this is really phenomenal. We know the story of the Dudoim. When Ruven came along and he picked some jasmine flowers and he brought them to his mother. And Rachel asked for the jasmine flowers. And the, the, uh, the response that Leah shows to Rachel is quite shocking. What did Leah say? Isn't it enough that you took my husband? And you also want to take my son's jasmine flowers? So... It seems that what's her complaint is that Rachel has taken 
her husband Yaakov away from her. So I don't know. If I was Leah, the first thing she should remember is, listen lady, who's the one that got you into this the first place? Who's the one that, that self-sacrificed to let you even be able to, to touch Yaakov? You know, and she could say, you know what? I mean, you think, you know what? In, in the fact that you allowed yourself to come before me, it's the least I could do for you. I mean, what do you, well, of course, the, the, of course that Yaakov loved Rachel more. It was obvious. I mean, that's why he wanted to marry her. So he wanted to marry her. So you know what, I, I, was, I was noble. I let you have a chance in, but I took, I took your husband from you. Who's my good? I let you in. Right? And more than that, what's even more difficult, what? No, she answers, but the answer she gives is it's a crazy answer. It says, okay, okay, okay. She placates her. As if as if Leia has a legitimate complaint. So she goes, okay, all right, you're right, you're right. I, I asked too much. I'm really sorry. Okay, I'll switch nights with you. Yaakov can go with you tonight. I'm willing to give up a night to be with Yaakov. Is that going to be good enough to... to okay, she says, yes, it's fine. She should have let her have it. And, and Rachel was very capable of letting people have it because she let Yaakov have it when she wanted to. She says, it's your fault, I don't have kids, why don't you pray for me? She could speak her mind, right? As we said, right, as we said yesterday, she has kanos. Rachel has kanos, she has zealousness. She's jealous, she, for, for mitzvah, she's jealous. When it's time to speak her mind, she speaks her mind. And if any place, this would be the place to speak your mind. So, uh, so it's very difficult to uh, to explain this little story, and that's why you'll see shortly that you know anybody who looks at the case of Rachel and Leah as just a good old-fashioned case of sibling rivalry doesn't know what they're talking about. Okay, that's, that's how many questions we got so far. Four questions. The fifth question. The fifth question is if you look carefully at the Medrash. The Medrash says that um, Rachel, and the way Rashi brings it, is that Ra, that Rachel Mosra Esimona. Mosar, the word Mosar means gave over. She gave over the Simon. Now, if anything, these Simonim were a secret. These signs were a secret. It was a secret between Yaakov and Rachel. So the word that should have been used was that she was gil saw. She revealed the secret. Not she gave over. Giving over is, is, is an expression of, well, listen, I happen to know this information. I'll, I'll, I'll pass it on. But when it's a secret, it's not a question of passing on. It's a question of revealing the secret. That is a much more accurate way of describing what's going on. I should have said she revealed the secret. Okay. <clears throat> And the final question, well, there's many, many more, but we're not going to go too deep into this. Um, the last thing that's a little bit um, difficult to understand, the Medrash mentions that when Yaakov wakes up in the morning, he criticizes Leah. And, and, and he says, you know, you, you're not a good person uh, that she... Uh, that he, he criticized her that you that you tricked me you tricked me uh, and uh, like like the whole night you didn't say anything and you tricked me about that I called you the name Rachel and you answered me and now I see your Leia say so see you're just like your dad you're a trickster so okay that's a complaint but is that the only complaint he had he can muster up against her how about the complaint that he should say how could you use these simonim that I gave to Rachel Right, so uh, uh, so uh, and that should have been the, the the bigger complaint. Why doesn't he mention this? So to in order to um, unravel all this, we have to uh, say a very important you sort of what sneeze is. When we understand what sneeze really is, then we can appreciate um, uh, what what the whole story over here is. He says. So let's look at this act. What was the act that Rachel did for Leah? Let's analyze it. So Leah is, is about to be humiliated by Lavan because Yaakov has given the simonim to Rachel. Rachel certainly doesn't have to give over the simonim. She's willing to give over the simonim so her sister will not be humiliated. 
Okay, that's a very nice thing. There's a tremendous act of chesed. Right? Tremendous act of chesed. However, what is the problem with every act of chesed? What's wrong with every act of chesed that you do? When you do an act of chesed, the person the recipient of the chesed feels that you've done the chesed with them and they always feel minimized by the chesed that you do because you know I, I couldn't do it on my own person you know you give them a lot of money they're, they're, they're down and out you give them a lot of money they're initially appreciative because you help them but as with all chesedim it always carries it's, 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 a, it's a what do you call it uh, a negative uh, that always comes out of it shortly after the person remembers you know whenever they look at you they say oh, because of you you know because of you I, I could make it but because of you I, I owe my life to you I owe, I owe my stability to you and nobody likes to owe anything to anybody in life you've taken away my sense of independence as the famous story with the one of the great Rebbe's I think it was the Belzer Rebbe one of the Rebbe's right, they said that somebody was, was insulting him publicly who said things bad about him he says I don't understand why he's insulting me I never did him a favor in my life <laughs> and believe me I've seen it many times in my life where you've helped people and, and, they, and they do bad things to you in return that's always the challenge of chesed chesed always brings together with it a person not being happy with you because you remind them of their of their ineffectiveness or their need to be helped. So you always have to, so that's we talked about Avram a lot about that as well, how you're able to do this. So now let's really look at the story over here. If you look carefully at the story, we'll see the most amazing thing that Rachel did. The most amazing thing. Now, you're never going to look at Rachel again. You're never going to look at her the same way, unless you've heard this idea before. <laughs> did Leah ever know did anybody ever say to Leah, I just want you to know, if you look in the text, did Yaakov, did Rachel, did Lavan, did anybody ever tell Leah that Rachel was the first choice of Yaakov? Now, uh, say, uh, uh, say, can you give me a chumash for a minute? I'm sorry to bother you. If you look carefully at the texts, remember, right there is four blue yeah. chumashim. Second, second, third, third. No, no. Right in front of your face. Right there. It's hard to find it when it's in front. It's the hardest place to find. You notice when you ask them to look for something, they immediately don't look what's in front of them. You know, it's it's a nature. I don't know why. If you want to not find something, put it in front of somebody. They won't find it. <laughs> so anyway, it's. Uh, well, wasn't it obvious that? It's, it's, uh, let's just see. Uh, where am I? So Lovin, uh, Lovin says to Yaakov, should you work for free? It's Lovin talking to Yaakov. Mm -hmm. So he says to Lovin, I'll work for you for Rachel for seven years. He says it to Lovin. Now, let's think a minute. So, who is Yaakov going to tell his decision to? He'll say it to Rachel. He'll say to Rachel, I'm going to get married to you because Rachel needs to know that he's going to get married to her. Why should he tell it to Leah? Just to hurt her feelings? And for seven years, she should always feel like she is the hated, uh, she's not, not chosen. Would Rachel tell it to Leah? Why should I hurt her feelings? Would Lavan tell it to Leah? No, because Lavan's planning to do a trick later on so it, there's no nowhere does the Torah say that anybody told Leah the fact that she wasn't chosen alright until you come to the very end it doesn't say anywhere that Leah was said that she wasn't the, the first choice she wasn't the first choice except that Rachel gave her the Sorry, right. Gave her the signs. So Hold on. Well, wait a minute. Huh. What, about the fact that, what about the fact that Leah knew that she was meant for Asa and that Rachel was meant for Yaakov? So, so Leah knew she was meant for Asa. So what was Leah doing the whole time? Crying. Crying and praying. Mm -hmm. So she didn't stop crying and praying. 
But the fact that she knew that they were meant to be together. They were meant to be together, but she knew she, she for sure should not marry Esau. Esau's a Russia. So what's she davening to Hashem? That she should marry Yaakov. So the whole seven years, you, there's no one in the text that makes any suggestion that Leah was informed and that ya anybody told Leah that she was not picked. Nor says that. And if, if Nor says that, you have no right. It doesn't even say at any point that she saw that she was the hated one. It only says after she got married. After she got married. And it's important that the Torah mentions it only then and not, why does there say before? Okay. So this this is this is a very important uh, point. 